All right then, so now you know a little bit more about what Docker is, the next step is to install it on your computer. And on the Docker website, you're gonna find some installation instructions for different systems, Mac, Windows, and Linux. Now on Mac and Windows, the way we install Docker is by downloading and using a tool called Docker Desktop. And on Linux, you can download the Docker engine directly without Docker Desktop. Although I think Docker Desktop is coming soon to Linux as well. Now, if you're on a Mac, installing Docker Desktop is really, really easy. Just go ahead and download it right here, depending on the different type of Mac that you have. And you can check out the system requirements right here as well. And then to install it, it's just a simple drag and drop into your applications folder. So Ted Dead Simple. Now on Windows, which is what I'm using right now, it's a little bit more complicated. And I will also say that running Docker on Windows is not quite as smooth as it is on a Mac or on computers, which already have a Linux distribution installed. But you can definitely still learn Docker on most modern versions of Windows, which is what we wanna do, right? So anyway, like I said, to install Docker Desktop on Windows, it's slightly more complicated. So we're gonna be installing Docker using a WSL2 backend. Now WSL is a Windows subsystem for Linux, which basically allows us to run a full Linux environment on Windows without a virtual machine. And it gives us a way to run Docker on our Windows machines. Now you can see here some system requirements for using this WSL2 backend. So you need one of these Windows versions installed right here. And you also need to enable the WSL2 features on Windows as well. And we get a link right here to see how to do that. But before you click that, go ahead and start the download of Docker Desktop by clicking on this button right here. Then let's take a look at how we enable WSL on Windows. All right then, so I'm gonna run through all of these instructions with you now to install and enable WSL. But before we do that, you need to make sure that you do have a Windows version that is capable of using WSL. So to check your Windows version, then you need to basically go down here and we want to search for Winver and then run this command and you can see your version right here and the build. And you need to make sure it's this build or higher if you're using Windows 10 or you have Windows 11, all right? So make sure you do that first. Now there is this command right here that you can use with PowerShell to basically do everything that you need to install and enable all of the different WSL features. However, I've had problems with that in the past. So what I'm gonna do is do things the manual way by clicking on this link right here. So let me just zoom in a little bit. All right, so there's a few different steps here. So the first step is to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux on your computer. So we need to open up PowerShell as an administrator so to do that, you just come down here, look for PowerShell, and you wanna right click and you wanna run this as an administrator. Now, when you do that, it's gonna basically ask for permission to do this, press yes. And then inside here, you just wanna type in or rather copy and paste this command right here. That's the first thing we need to do, okay? So I've already done that, I'm not gonna do it again, but do that first of all, copy it, and then paste it into here and press enter. All right, so step two, check requirements for running WSL2. So to update to WSL2, you must be running Windows 10. So these versions are higher, right? So we've already done this. We've tested or rather we've checked our version of Windows and the build. So this step, we can go ahead. And then step three, enable virtual machine feature. So before installing WSL2, you must enable the virtual machine platform optional feature. So again, in PowerShell, as an administrator, we need to run this command. So you copy this one by clicking that, open up your PowerShell right here, paste it and run it again. And then you need to restart your machine to complete the WSL install and update to WSL2. All right then. So once you've restarted, once you've done all that and restarted your computer, then the next step is to download the Linux kernel update package. So click on here, this link to do that, it's gonna download it. And then once you've downloaded it, you just need to run that package. So down here, step five, once you've done that, set WSL2 as your default version because we have standard WSL and WSL2 as well. So we need to make sure WSL2 is our default version, which is what Docker is gonna use. So 
open PowerShell and run this command down here to do that. So copy this. And again, in PowerShell over here, you just need to paste that in and press enter. And that's gonna set the default version of WSL for us. So that's pretty much all done. The next thing we need to do is install a Linux distribution that we want, for example, Ubuntu. So to do that, we open up the Microsoft Store. You can click on that link or you can just search for store right here and press enter. And then that's gonna open up this Microsoft Store over here. And once this is fully loaded, we can choose a version of Linux to install. So you can search up here for whatever you want. I've searched for Ubuntu in the past, which is what I've installed. So select that and you can see this Ubuntu package right here. And we see these other Ubuntu packages. This is the one I've got, but I'm just gonna show you this one. So you can see this button right here, get. So click on whichever Ubuntu you want. I've chosen this one and then you click on get and that's gonna install it for you. All right, so do that first of all. Now, when it's done that and it's complete, this button should change to say something like open, I think it is, like this. So you can click on that button to open up that new Linux installation. Now, the first time you do this, having just installed it, it's gonna also install something extra. So just wait a couple of minutes for that to happen. And then it's gonna ask you to create an account. So it wants some kind of username or email and a password as well. So do that and then that is the Linux installation done. So then once it's all installed, either on Windows or on Mac, you can open up Docker Desktop and take a look. So down here, I'm just gonna search for Docker and then I'm gonna open it up. And then when it is open, it's gonna look something like this. So eventually, this Docker Desktop app is gonna list all of our containers in this tab, all of our images in the next tab, and then all of the volumes as well. Now, all of that might seem like gobbledygook for now, but later on, it's gonna all make sense. So whenever you're using Docker on your computer, you need to make sure that it's up and running in the background. So on Windows, it should be down here in the bottom right when you click on this little arrow and Docker is the white whale right there. And on Mac, you should be able to see it somewhere in the top right, I think, up here somewhere. So that's Docker installed. Next up, we're gonna talk about images and containers, which are two of the most important concepts that you need to understand when it comes to working with Docker.